What is going on, everyone? Commodore Lads here today. Very test my live reaction to Eden Zero manga chapter 173. Now, the chapter has finally come out. We are back from break. We are here today to read the latest installment of Hiro Mashima's up and coming new hit series. And of course, shout out to Azuki for providing chapters week in, week out because they're doing God's work as they should be. Tuesday mornings, you already know what it is, man. I was a little bit surprised though from last week. Well, I really shouldn't say I was a little bit surprised because, you know, last week most manga were on break and everything. So for Mashima to go on break, was a little bit uh, different from what I would know because the man sometimes would have the energy to put out two, three chapters in a week and stuff. But given the fact that he had an all-time year when it came to Eden Zero, you know, going from the beginning of the year with Foresta and stuff to the way this year ended, or I should say 2021 ended, and the man needed a break, plain and simple. So, um, and we know next week we're going to be getting a chapter, so we should be back on schedule afterwards. But I do hope, though, at the same time, Kadansha give Mashima some time to relax too because... Uh, you know, he, he brings his greatness every week, but you want to run someone through the mud, even though he has the stamina uh, of like a god or something. Because I don't know the the, the fact that this man can platinum games and just write two to three chapters in a week that is just scary. But, anyways, we got a chapter to read going into the contents right now with Lenard or Lenard, whatever how you want to pronounce it. But basically, the planet of the Ziggy and the dark stars are at and stuff. And I have to say, the last chapter was kind of crazy, right? Because the first half of the stuff with Rebecca and Noah in regards to, you know, the multiverse, World 416, all that and everything. I still feel like there's something between Noah and Rebecca that, and this is more from Noah's side that we're unaware of. I do think Noah has some kind of connection to Rebecca, whether if he's responsible for, you know, her being, you know, without any parents and stuff. Maybe he killed them or that there's a closer ties that we don't know about and everything possibly. But I feel like he is still keeping some stuff in the dark because, it, you know, for all, knowing all this information about Rebecca's abilities and all that with Cat Leaper and all that, I felt like he would have just gave her up to the government. But the fact that he hasn't done that, there's got to be something deeper to it. So I hope, though, eventually we'll be able to find that out. And then the stuff afterwards, you know, we're going to go to this planet and fight Ziggy, which is crazy to me that after the time skip and stuff, we're just going to jump straight into it. I feel like it is a little bit fast and I wouldn't be mad at all of Mashima if you decide to have Ziggy just pull out and but have like the dark stars in each planet or something let's say when they go on the way to fight them because then we still have the rest of the uh, Galactica uh, to take care of and stuff right so there's still so much to go on I, I'd be very shocked if Ziggy gets taken care of like right away I know mother is the goal but to get this done now I'd be a little bit shocked and then of course the stuff afterwards with uh, LC and uh, Justice possibly are going to throw hands too because we know Justice has been watching over and stuff what's going on with the crew of Edens and all that so but anyways let's get into this chapter let's see exactly what Mashma is cooking for us for chapter 173 all right okay I should okay okay I should point this out I should point this out shout out to my buddy Sage I, I don't know if he'll be watching this or not but I have to put it out there so I was made aware that this was supposed to be the cover page for this week's chapter because I opened up a DM for my man and he said, yo, you want to peep the new Eden Zero? I'm like, it doesn't drop until the 4th. And then he sends me the cover page with Hamura, you know, cheeked up and everything. But um, I said, listen, man, if you if you give it to me colored, then, you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I, I couldn't be mad at him because, you know, Hamura is top one, all right? I know Shiki's top two, but Hamura is top one. And uh, the art speaks for itself. So, shout out to my shout out to my boy Sage. But uh, my girl looking absolutely gorgeous, as she should. So, yeah, that, that we'll save for later. Anyways, let's get into the chapter. The Kaede Cosmos. The planet Lenard. We believe this is where we'll find Ziggy. So, it's from both locations and stuff. For Elsie, she's over here. The in Zero uh, up on the, on the southern side and stuff. We will join with Elsie's fleet to launch an attack. We have never faced enemy forces so large. I think this is going to be an intense battle. It's just still, I don't know, it's still kind of crazy to me the fact that we went from going into one war and are jumping straight into like another one. And it's not like a rent. This is a huge deal, man. Right? Like, I, I just don't see Ziggy going down. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't see it happening whatsoever. Because, like, if it does, then it, like, it speeds up the whole process of the story. Just like that, and we still have so many other like places and you know things to do before even getting to mother and stuff. So, a vast there, buckles. <laughs> it's Connor. 
You see everyone's reaction after as he pulls in. I told ye, I'd be recently escaped from the planet Lenard. I have no mind to be going back to the accursed pl place. Dead serious, I be. As captain, I order ye, turn this ship. You're not our captain. <laughs> Talk says there. You're still here, old man. Just leave. No one's stopping you. The starfighters, you could have taken one. Oh, bro. We gotta protect clean, all right? <laughs> we gotta, we gotta protect the man. I just, like <laughs> have to listen. Hashtag protect clean from Shiki. I just want to put that out there, just for now, before uh, we all forget. Heartless fiends, the lot of ye. All of Kaede Cosmos already be under Ziggy's control, and I be a fugitive. I could never shake off Ziggy's pursuers in a puny litter star fighter. <laughs> I just sit there swearing with Pino. Bro, someone protect Pino too, man. She cannot be learning any swear words yet. I heard you're floating through space without any ship at all. That were only a bit of good fortune. In any case, I won't stop you from doing what you're doing, what you're thinking of doing, but ye won't be getting me anywhere near Leonard. What do we do, Shiki? I guess we'll just have to drop him off on some planet somewhere. Outside this cosmos, if you please, as pleasant and safe a planet as ye can find. What a demanding gentleman. Oops. <laughs> I love how Marissa hasn't, uh, even after three years, you would think like, oh, maybe she holds back on speaking out loud. Like, no, nah, man, that's part of her character. But she better not lose that, even in the series. She better not lose that. If we're going to another cosmos, we'll need to tr fast travel. So we'll have to waste the ship's energy to give the old man what he wants. Well, we have an, we have an ether drive, so the energy will regenerate in time. But it's still a waste. Sakura, hey, we're going back to the garden. Yo, okay. So back to the Sakura Cosmos. But that's kind of crazy how they can go like from that far deep. Well, because to be fair, because after uh, Dragonfall, and they went to the Aoi, and then like that, that's still. But I, I kind of wonder though. If Mashima ever decides to put up a thing where, like, because I know this with Trails, Kiseki, and all that, right? Where they show, like, a, like a, a map of what the contents of Miria looks like and stuff, and how, like, everything's, like, shadow out for the areas they haven't gone to. I wonder if Mashima will ever do something like that, like, a map of, like, the universe. But then it gets so vast and stuff, so I don't know, like, how he would depict it and everything. But it would be interesting if he does something like that. So we kind of have a vast idea of, like, how far each cosmos are from one another, even though I know it's technically by light years and all that. So, Sakura Cosmos, the water planet, Blue Garden. Doesn't look like it hasn't changed uh, too much either, but hey man, shout out to the god. Wow, this takes me back. Hi. Hey, is that? I think it's Rebecca, for real. Yeah, it's just crazy because she's coming back here. Uh, remember, she didn't have the clout. She did not have the three mil plus subs in, in her account and stuff. So, now that she comes back as a true star, the people recognize her. It's like, yeah, for real, like in person. Can I have your autograph? Becky, I watch all your videos. I <laughs> show them a run. Yeah, we haven't been in this cosmos in ages. Uh, wait a minute. Sakura cosmos? That means, uh, of course, shout me. <laughs> like a shout me. Listen, man. Listen, man. There's, there are certain wagons that uh, you have to acknowledge in this verse. We start off with Fomuras and you have to acknowledge shout me. It's, it's just, that's just the law of physics right there. <laughs> but he's the company's kind of, looking at that right off the bat. Xiaomei, couldn't we have saved a lot of time by asking her where Ziggy is? I mean, that is true, but like, no, I don't know if you have to go through that gauntlet again with the uh, the battles and all that. I don't know. Nope. We're lucky that Mildane was in the Sakura Cosmos when it was. Oh, it changes? Huh? That planet moves around erratically. It could be in the Aoi Cosmos or anywhere now. All we know is that it's in some location where we can't find it. Yo. Now, is that the planet's will? Or does Mother have something with that? Because as we know, for Xiaomi to obtain the ability that she had, right? She lost all her memories of Mother and stuff upon the meeting and everything. So, but I think, you know what? That might just be the planet. It might be the planet. Because that would be kind of crazy if Mother's, like, influence extended so far through Xiaomei that after you link up with her, that's it, you gotta go somewhere else. It gets stay in the same spot, but I actually do like that, because then it's like, oh, you can't just go back there all the time for the answers, you have to keep searching for her. It, just like in true JRPG fashion, right? You want to try and find that one, uh, 
the smuggler and stuff that provides you with items and everything, but he doesn't stay in that same location every day. You have to go like all across uh, the maps and stuff to try and find them. Okay, so Connor now looks like he's wearing up uh, the uniform and stuff that we've seen from before. Hmm, takes a good planet, this. I can live a safe, peaceful life here. So, you see Laguna, so something's been bothering me. Why are you work? Why were you working on Ziggy's planet? Told you, I did. I didn't know the planet were Ziggy's. No, I'm asking what a human was doing on a planet that builds robots automatically in the first place. There'd be a few jobs that only a human can do, but you're a ship's captain. Aye. Formerly, I were a captain in the Aoi Cosmos Freedom Force. And you see here that he has like a marking with the words and stuff, Freedom Force on his, um, on the back of his wrist. You were fighting the Empire? As you know, the Freedom Force was defeated by Nero and his armies. Now, world, the world changed, so they have to factor that into right now. Because this is this is a little different. Uh, yeah, this is very different. But I, I abandoned me ship before it was sunk. I can't help wondering if I had stayed with the force, maybe. But I'd be flattering myself to think I have made a difference. And I do like the fact that like Laguna is like right there, like having that conversation with them because of the stuff that happened before with him and Oasis and all that. Even if it's not under similar terms, like identical like piece by piece and stuff but even then and then of course you see right there clean rebecca and Homero. that is a scary ass like trio of right there people have like you you would need like all, all snipers on deck to make sure that nobody comes in their vicinity you know you let them prosper let them enjoy life talk it out have your girl talk and all that but any creep you see anywhere you gotta pop them down so make sure that uh they're not bugging them that crowd, you're so popular. Ah, it could have been worse if Couchpo were if Couchpo were here with us. She's too busy obsessing over the food in our kitchen. <laughs> oh, Mura. And you see the look afterwards on Connor. I had a daughter. If she were alive, she'd be right around the age of those lasses there. If she were alive. She left me soon after she were born. That be what inspired me to leave me ship. Food for thought because I'm going to presume that we're going to meet somebody who's actually his daughter. I'm going to presume right away we're going to meet somebody who's his daughter. Now, who exactly would that be? I don't know. I have to probably dig even deeper into like the uh, the bag of Mashima to figure that out, but that's interesting. <laughs> I can't believe it, man. I feel like you feel a feel way about it and stuff, of course. Guy talking about his story about losing his kid and everything, not even there with him anymore. It's understandable, but he shed the tears. I'll be your new daughter. Yo, relax. Relax, bro. I'll be listen. Hey, man. We're fine. But relax? <laughs> like, huh? No, I were. What? Think of me as your daughter, dad. No, thank you. <laughs> what a weirdo. <laughs> it must be hard that she passed away so soon after she was born. No? She don't be dead, I reckon. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Because the way that he made it seem, like she left me out soon after she was born, it made it seem that she had pretty much uh, been taken away or something. So yeah, so of course, so she is alive. Now, who it is, though, of the sea. No, she don't be dead, I reckon. He's like, ah. She left me, meaning me wife took her and left home. I can rule out Homura because I think the dad was already dead or something by that point. And there's no features there that look anything close. So whatever, from what I remember from Connor, at least so how the anime showed him, his color scheme and stuff, then okay, we'll have to see. Don't be so confusing, good grief. That's why I'd be traveling from cosmos to cosmos, looking for me wife and daughter, now here I be. But was but was that originally? But then that's the thing, because we changed, we're changing like from the multiverse stuff, the worlds and all that and everything. So that, that could not have been his uh, original mission, too, even, like, in uh, the first and second universes and stuff. So, Universe 3, it's different now, too. So, we, I don't know if he would have those same intentions. Adventures, Guild, Shooting Starlight. Yo, Clarice, man, like, yo, I always say, man, that, that's a secretary right there, man. Wow, I missed you, Rebecca. Happy. Clarice, did you listen to anything I said? <laughs> we found this guy, Captain. 
We found this captain and we need you to take him in. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny, man. Well, we can do that, but treating a man like a stray kitten, scurvy cat. Uh, it's good to finally see you all again, uh, Master Noah. Oh, uh, man, okay. I don't know. I can't fully trust him yet, man. It might be in, in, in the neutral setting, but I can't fully trust him yet. I just ta I talked to you just the other day. You. Oh, dear, Shiki. Are you still angry with me because of that one incident? And my, how you've grown. Darn right, I'm still angry. You put Rebecca in danger. And I love how he draws the name tags because obviously you have... The freaking Galactica Intelligence Agency's director on one side, and then you have one of the Galactia from the Ross Channel says in one side too. Darn right, I'm still angry for Rebecca in danger. Well, we are technically members of opposing organizations, so your antagonism is, fa is fair. Anyway, we brought you Mr. Connor. You <laughs> see, Peter's just like, relax, relax, I don't want to fight. We brought the guy, just you know, chill out. So now it's time, it's finally time to attack Lenard. <clears throat> but we have to get ready. Lenard, that's an awfully far planet. Call me Captain if you... Wait, is that supposed to be... Uh... Is that Julia? No, I was supposed to say Julia. Freaking... Um... Oh, it's been so long since I read Fairy Tale. It's been so long. Hold on. I can't... I can't... I cannot do that to her. I cannot do that... Yeah, Levy. Yeah, Levy. There you go. Uh, so I'm wondering, like... What? Like, of course. The, the multiverse is going to come true. I saw a comment someone saying that possibly we're going to get something where... Uh, Rave Master and then Fairy Tale get all like mumble jumbled in here and stuff, which I wouldn't be so opposed to that because again, when you throw in the multiverse, anything can happen. But uh, yeah, no, we, we had like Nasu and uh, Lucy before early in the series in like one frame, so it's not that crazy. Beep, beep, beep. It's from Hermit. We have a problem. What would that be? The Interstellar Union Army knows we came to this planet. What? You ratted us out? No. It's Feather from Orasino says Interstellar. Oh, we're about to see her in action. Hold on. She has the same power as I do? There might be more to this than we don't know. The Eye of God. An ether gear that allows its user to observe people's locations. Wait a minute. Couldn't we have used that to find exactly where Ziggy is? <laughs> Going back to earlier in the chapter when they're like, ah! No, it cannot find mechanical life forms. Interesting. Okay. The Eden Zero is surrounded. We can't move. Moss, moss. Well, we could blow them all away with the main cannon. But what about your orders? So we've seen where the Eden Zero is, Blue Garden. And then where their locations? Because you see, like, a whole bunch of ships and everything, too, from uh, that part. No, they're not our enemy. Don't shoot them. We shall return immediately. we we'll stand their attack until then. They probably sent an army to the guild to be careful. You see them all pulling up. Our target is Shiki Grand Bell of the Oracional Seis Galactica. Listen up. There are a lot of civilians here. Whatever you do, don't hurt them. Commander Feather, all units are in place. And she pulled up with the energy, man. She quiet, relaxed, eyes closed, eyes open after. And she is strutting. She's styling. She's profiling. She has arrived. They will emerge from the building soon. When you see them, shoot. I mean, let me just commend right now Mashma on the fit. Because the fit game goes crazy. Now, can she back it up with their other assets? We have to see. You see the murmurs and stuff, so I guess like the uh, most like earthquakes and stuff. Dang it, after they're after me, aren't they? If I knew this was going to happen, I would have protested when they gave me that weird new title. Oh, who went on about how it boosted his cred? That was you, Vice. <laughs> you imagine, bro, she gets like a letter in the thing like from Hogwarts and stuff. Oh, you've been invited to join the, uh, the Oracion Says Galactica. I don't know about all this. Vice, nah, man, you got to do it up. You gotta do it up. Nah, you gotta do it up, man. Look, think about think about the clout. Think about the clout. <laughs> and Jin just like, bro, like, come on, man. Like, you, you, you put him up to it. Anyway, I'll lure them away. You guys get to the ship while they're attracted. I'll be right behind you. No. Rebecca said, ah, oh, skip. 
We're a crew. We go back to the ship together. Dog, yo. I love this energy, man. Yeah. You remind them. It's not a one-person team. It is a team. You take the one out. It's a team. All right, damn it. And you see everyone else, the conviction in them and stuff. Like, yeah, nah, we are a crew. We got we to stick together. And you see right there from uh, Shiki. Okay. We'll make a run for the ship. But they're not our enemy. Don't kill anyone. And you see all the pulls up and everything. Oh, I love this, man. You got Laguna and stuff in the back. Too. Like, I just I just love it, though, man. Like, the, like the new additions and stuff with Jane Clean and Laguna is just absolutely awesome, man. I see it. I see you all emerging together. And that's the end of the chapter. Okay. All right, so... Very interesting stuff here. So, Connor has been dropped off now at Blue Garden. And obviously won't be taking part in the expedition to Lenar and stuff. So that's perfectly fine stuff. Because I don't know how much of, of, a, of an asset he really would be going into it besides being like Almsman and stuff. But considering the universe changed, I don't know if he would have like the same like... Um, no, he probably would have because he had the gear and everything on too. So it might, he might have still had some uh, quality still of a Helmsman. But the stuff with his daughter is interesting. And I feel like we may get that in this arc possibly. If not, eventually some point in the story. I would have to wonder though who exactly that would be though. You know, because it said that the wife that took the wife took the kid and they and they booked it out. I wanted to rule out Homura because again, the hair color and all that. Like her and I and like Connor would just be a weird combination. So I, I don't think that's the case at all. Um Rebecca, we still don't know about the family and stuff, but I think she might have known something with Connor beforehand, right? Clean and Jin, no, because remember, they came from like royalty at the time and stuff, I believe, from their family before they were put in the positions they were in. Uh, before, like, the whole separation stuff, you know, one going with Dragon and then uh, the other one with the fake sister. So, but who would it be, though? I have to really think about that one. Now, in the case of Feather, though, right? They're going to get their escape and stuff afterwards. I have to wonder what's gonna what's gonna end up taking place later on in terms of the four shining stars because obviously with witches you know passing and everything we still have a spot that's open it hasn't been stated yet if someone else is gonna take her position you know I would presume that you know maybe someone within the crew like clean would maybe end up you know coming in and taking that position afterwards um, you know the, the role and all that and everything but how crazy would it be and I, I don't want to rule out completely that they're able to win feather over. Because of the fact that Pino stated that, or I should, it was Pino, that it was stated that because of the whole Eye of God thing afterwards, right, which is a similar ability to what Hermit has and all that and everything, right, that what if they were able to, like, get her to leave the Interstellar to join up with Inzo? You know what I mean? Like, I, it's something I just I thought of now <clears throat> because they still need to fulfill that position for the Four Shining Stars. You're not going to go fight Ziggy with only three right now at the moment with Hermit, uh, with Hamura and then with Sister. I just don't, I don't see it, like, logically, especially within the four Dark Stars. It just doesn't make sense to me. We have to be four on four, right? So, unless, like, Clean were to get involved in that whole thing, because she's the only other girl I can see from the position stuff, then it would be interesting if they were able to convince her after. But I feel like even now, that's such an early thing to do, where I think Feather needs to kind of see that, you know, they aren't as bad as they seem, even though Shiki does have the position of one of the Arasiano says and stuff as the Galactica, so, it's a little difficult uh, to kind of gauge it. But I wouldn't be opposed to it. But I obviously, of course, the interactions with the crew, <clears throat> you know, like it's not like one piece where you have to know like a backstory or whatever to uh, try to correlate with it. Even though, by technicality, the crew of Edens kind of has that going for them where a lot of them have their backstories and stuff where eventually they join up with the group and everything. So, but I do wonder though, if that's a possibility that we could see maybe that eventually over time they can convince feather afterwards possibly to join up i know it's very like out there it's a reach and all that but i'm just thinking in the long term that we still need to fulfill the position for which unless internally they already have something in the works that they're going to do after so we're just gonna have to wait and see but right now it looks like yeah we're gonna basically make this escape after and then get ready to prepare for the events at lenard and jump in afterwards with lc to go there and then for sure justice can be weighing on the sides after the try to fight her and i don't know if i can see the two of them dying at that arc when it does happen like right now technically we're in the preparation for it but 
I don't know if I can see that being where Justice and Elsie end up dying because for me, I feel like there's going to be like a resolution at the far end of the story. I don't see it just being done yet. Right. So, but yeah, no, this was a, this is a very good chapter. Like again, a lot of stuff we know now with Connor and the daughter and stuff, obviously dropping him off now back at blue garden, the conversation here with Noah and stuff, but more importantly now, there's stuff going on here with feather, you know, she's going to try and capture them and all that. The stuff to Xiao Mei, which I really like again because the whole JRPG effect and stuff that it has, where it's not like you can go to a special location all the time. It's going to keep changing. You have to go to different places. And it's in a location that we don't know right now. So more than likely, it's in a cosmos that we're unaware of and all that. But again, the JRPG vibes were definitely heavy uh, early parts in the chapter and stuff. But I'm very excited to see what's going to go down next week. Uh, more than likely, they'll escape from uh, Feather. Maybe they end up showing their wharf afterwards in terms of the crew. And Feather gets an interest after in them. And who knows? Maybe eventually later on, they can finally get uh, Witch's position fulfilled. And somebody comes in and takes over after, whether it's internally from the outside. We'll have to wait and see. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below regarding this week's chapter of Eden Zero. Let me know what you guys think of like all the stuff that happened in it. Like, who would you make to be the daughter of Connor based on who we've seen so far in the story that could possibly align to the idea that they're the kid of Connors and stuff, you know, whether the mom's still around or not, but at the very least, you know, who the daughter is, um, the stuff afterwards regarding feather, like, obviously we can see the Caribbean's going to escape, but just food for thought. What would you think of the idea of possibly having feather be convinced to switch sides from the interstellar to the crew of Edens and fulfilling that position afterwards? Um, that which I left behind, like, or because I, I know, like, the back of my head, I'm a selfish person, I would love to see a chance that maybe there could be a chance of which coming back, but it's completely gone. It's like I, ha I have to get over it, like, she's gone. But if you had to presume who's gonna take which's position afterwards in the crew of Edens, let me know down in the comments. Would you want to see me feather, possibly even be clean, or somebody else that's completely different that we don't know? Let me know down in the comments. Like the video if you enjoy. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new here. If you want to be part of the weekly experience when it comes to my coverage of Eden Zero week in and week out, subscribe if you haven't already. Click on the bell to stay up to date with everything that goes on the channel. Again, first time watchers, if you're here for my content when it comes to Eden Zero, you haven't seen some of my other stuff before. I had a discussion video talking about Eden Zero. I have the previous reactions already to the series, you know, in terms of the catch up and the first one for 172. If you haven't seen all that, check it out. And with that being said, we'll catch you guys next Tuesday for more of the greatness of Hero Mashman's up and coming new hit series. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to what's about to go down right here because we're a crew. And like Shiki was talking about, don't worry, I got this. No, we got this. You love to see it. So, Commodore last signing off. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care. Going crazy, yeah, we going crazy. I'm with the team, yeah, yeah, we going crazy.